This series is just simply amazing. After three episodes, I dare say that this this is such a unique and quality series that this is probably going to become anime of the season and definitely a potential anime of the year nomination because right now with the third episode it retains the consistent quality it's had since the first episode with its unique environment and characters along with a nice contrast between the two main characters that we've been following. And so in this case, episode 3, instead of splitting the time between like just one entire episode focusing on one character, for instance the old man in the first episode and then the second episode focuses on the teenager, in this episode we focus on both characters, getting to see how they interact with the environment and how different they really are. And this was a really good episode to show the contrast between these two, which if you didn't notice from the first and second episode, this episode kind of nails it in for you can kind of understand it a little bit more clearly. In this case... We get to see the involvement of how these two individuals are affecting those around them. As we know, the teenager, he is someone that is very dark. Someone that obviously doesn't know about morality. He doesn't understand what's right and wrong, or he doesn't clearly understand what it means to take a life. And he also tries to figure out if he's really alive when he kills someone, and that's how he figures it out, especially in last episode when, you know, he did what he did to the family, and when he was talking about One Piece, the man is just completely messed up, but we can see he lacks any, you know, care for life, or anything, he's a very selfish individual, and in this episode as well, alongside of that, we get to see these character traits from him, but we get to see also from our main male character, the old man, we get to see how different he is, and how he showcases his powers, and it's just, it's so nice to see the contrast between these two characters, it's been a long time since I've seen something like this in anime, I've been the last time I seen two characters that we were following that were just like the exact opposites but so similar I think was Death Note actually I think that was the last time I saw something quite like this when you have like an evil character even a good character and they both you know are kind of like on an even playing field but they just have different ways to use or exercise their strength and that's what was going on here so anyways diving straight headfirst into it let's talk about the situation of this episode the conflict so the teenager the conflict in this episode is he wants to get his friend that has been skipping school to go back to school. And that was one of the main crucial plot points of last week's episode. And after constantly talking with his friend once again in this episode, his friend finally built up the courage to go to school. When he finally gets there, obviously there's some bullies have been picking on him, which led him into the situation he was where he didn't want to go to school because he was getting picked on constantly. He just didn't want to go to school. And so you have it to where the teenager's like, hey, look, I'll protect you. I'll make sure nobody puts you in any harm or whatever. I'll make sure you're completely safe. And so with those words of what he saw his friend do last week when he was just doing like, you know, like a play and all that, making cars crash into each other, you know, when he shot a bird down, just all these different little details, basically he realized that his friend is pretty strong, so he definitely could be protected by him. And so as one event leads to another, you eventually see the scene where the bullies pop up, they try to mess with, you know, the dude that was skipping school, and the teenager's like, you know, you need to get away, leave him alone and all that, and then you can see this entire demeanor to where you're questioning, is he going to kill them? Because we've already seen from, you know, the earlier scenes, especially from episode 2, killing is something he's known to do, so it's not beneath him at all. And so when you see this scene where he's grabbing this dude's arm and he's like crunching it down, you're wondering how far is he really, go really gonna go? And as it continues on, eventually the dude leaves and all that, and you're like, oh, that's the end of that. I guess, you know, the dude's not gonna be killed. Then we get to see a rooftop scene, which then he reveals that he does kill people and his friend gets to see it firsthand, which kind of dives into more of the psyche of the character, the teenager, and kind of how he views things. Number one, when he killed the people, he killed those bullies and all that, he expected probably his friend to be very happy, excited, and probably be alongside of him for the ride. But his friend didn't necessarily really act like that whatsoever. And constantly the teenager is trying to reassure his friend, like, hey, look, don't be scared and all that. I'm I'm gonna protect you, I'm not gonna hurt you, or whatever, and even though he's saying these things, it's understandable why his friend would act like that, why he would be scared, because he just saw these people just die instantly, and he's just so calm and casual about it, like it's just a normal occurrence, and so he realized something was definitely off, and eventually he's like, look, I, I can't hang out with you anymore, I, I, I can't be around you, and all that, because I can't be around someone that can just kill people, and not even care about it, like, you, you clearly don't have a conscience and care about why you're doing these things, and you can even see the teenager where he just doesn't comprehend the fact of what he has done. 
what he has taken away. He's a very selfish individual. He doesn't really care about individuals around him. He only cares about himself, and that's basically how he acted. He just, he didn't have any regard for anyone around him, and he was just very confused why his friend was being very upset, which is just a very interesting and fascinating way to look at his character. But anyways, once all that was said and done, it is revealed that the teenager or these robots, they actually can heal individuals. They can, you know, fix wounds and possibly even treat cancer patients and stuff like that, which is just insane. It's, you know, honestly, when you think about it from a medical perspective, that's a radical jump in technology to advance medical technology and help people out. That would be something very impressive and something that you'd honestly want the world to know because there's so many people that you could save. However... When you see the demeanor of the character, the teenager, we know he doesn't care little for life. And like I said, he's already a selfish person. He he doesn't want to share these gifts with anyone. He doesn't want to help anyone out. He just wants to have his own fun, do his own thing that satisfies him. So he doesn't care about any individual around him. And so we get to see the contrast between how he uses his powers, how he learns to use these powers, compared to how our main character, I think his name is Hero, how he learns to use his abilities and how he can help people out in society. So you have one person that's using the dark darker stuff of the technology, for instance, the weapon capabilities and stuff like that, while you have Hero, our main old man character, that is using these abilities, these weapons, to heal and help others out and save them. So like I said, you have a contrast between these two characters. One's evil, one's good, and it's kind of like this in this perspective of how you can view it. It's like a weapon, okay? And people think of guns or weapons, it's not necessarily the tool or the weapon that is evil, it's actually how the weapon is used by mankind. That's what really determines if a tool is actually evil. And in this case, I think that's kind of what the discussion is here. It's trying to showcase that these two individuals, they've been gifted crazy power, godlike power that could easily just wipe out the planet. They have given power that no man honestly should possess whatsoever. However, because it's a weapon, it doesn't automatically mean that it's an evil thing, because a weapon doesn't mean it's evil. It doesn't have a consciousness, it cannot think. And so these two individuals, what they choose to do with what they've been given, determines if it's for use for evil intent or good intent, and that's what's happening here. And I think that's the main core message of what this series is trying to represent, when it shows these two individuals. It's not just the fact that one's a teenager, one's an old man, one, you know, like there's exact opposites here. One's evil, one's good, one's teenager, one's old, and then you have it to where one cares about life, one doesn't care about life. I know there's like the exact opposites here, but it's also about intentions of weapons, how someone uses stuff, and I think that's kind of what's being shown here. Anyways, though, let's talk about how our old man character learned his abilities. You could see in this episode when he tries to learn how to fly, it's a very emotional moment. I love the reference to Astro Boy, and it's really nice to see how he learned how to do it, because someone his age, obviously, he would recognize Astro Boy. It's a very old series. It was a revolutionary series, and it made it to where anime is today. If it wasn't for Astro Boy, anime wouldn't be here like it is, so it's thanks to that, and for him to be as old as he is, obviously, he would know about Astro Boy and all that, since it's such an old anime, and seeing how he was singing the song and all that to try to fly, it does make sense. And when he started to have his back opened up and he flew, I'm like, this is a really nice reference. And it once again shows a contrast between the teenager and the old man. How the teenager, how he was just having a casual conversation about One Piece while he was just hurting an entire family. While you have this dude in this episode, the old man, he was, you know, just thinking about an opening song or whatever from Astro Boy. And then his back opened up and he was able to fly. Just very nice stuff going on there showcasing how similar but different they are. Now, getting off of that, let's talk about the aspect of the healing. So, I briefly already mentioned that in this video, but the healing is something that I really liked. It was a very heartfelt moment when you saw the old man hero when he grabbed the cat and healed the cat. It was nice to see, because I've seen a lot of anime, read a lot of manga, and normally when an animal gets injured, usually they don't get saved. They're, you know, GG, they're done, game over. And I like how he walked up, he healed the cat, the cat was able to survive. It was a nice moment, it was a very feel-good moment, and it just showed what type of person Hero is. He's someone that does care about life, and he doesn't take for granted what he's been given. He wants to help out others, and he goes out of his way to help out others. And when he realizes he's been gifted the power to heal others, the first thing he does is go to a hospital to start fixing cancer patients, you know, help people that have been paralyzed, which just shows what type of person he is, and like I said, the contrast. I, I know I keep saying that, but it's just something very big about the series, and it needs to be pointed out. So... 
Besides that, one last thing I do need to talk about is how the teenager learned to use his abilities. We've seen from our perspective that Hero the Old Man, he's been learning how to use his abilities thanks to trial and error and through practice and being very safe with it. It's obvious when you look at these scenes that the reason how the teenager is able to learn how to use his abilities, like, you know, how to fire, like, his weapons and stuff, is because of practice. Him actually trying to practice these certain things. And when there was a conversation when he was talking to his friend and all that that was skipping school, he's like, you know I've always been like this and all that. You, you know for a fact I've always been like this. It just... You know me for so long, and most likely he is actually telling the truth, because for this man to go out of his way and practice with these weapons, and keep going on and on about it, basically, it shows that he most likely was doing this already in his head many, many years prior, before this even happened, before he got rebuilt as a robot. So, most likely, the murderous intent that he had for individuals was already there for many years and he finally was just given tools where he can do what he wants to do and that's what's happening here so he's probably probably had a lot of trial and error to learn his abilities and i i don't even want to begin to imagine how many people he's hurt to be able to learn his abilities to the level he's at because i mean look what hero is having to do i mean look how hard it is for him to try to learn how to use his uh, abilities and his new profound powers he has now in the series Basically, it shows that there's a lot of work to be done, and he just doesn't even comprehend what he needs to do with them. So anyways, besides that, that's basically it when it comes to the latest episode of Inuyashiki. It was a wonderful episode. Straight up, wonderful episode. 10 out of 10. Phenomenal. It was a great show. I really look forward to this every single Thursday, and I, I have to say, honestly, I'm glad it's coming out for Fall of Anime 2017. This is easily one of the best shows, and Fall of Anime 2017 is such a good season. It really is. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I've already dropped or I don't like. For instance, like, you know, Osama Game, and then, you know, you have Evil or Live and stuff. But even though I don't like those series, I think there's many out there that might appreciate those series and enjoy them. And I feel like there's just series out there that... I still have yet to watch, and I, I just think there's enough from Fall of Anime 2017 to keep everybody interested and happy, and it's just a really good season overall. Fall of Anime 2017 is just a very good season, and once again, I'm just glad I have this from this season, because it's so unique. I mean, when is the last time we actually have had an old man as a main male character? I mean, think about that. So I'm going to end it here. You all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you don't like this video, obviously leave a dislike. I won't fault you for it. So you all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. She be out.